So if you have ever felt feelings of I'm not as smart as these other PhD students or I'm not as smart as my PI or I'm not as intelligent as, as these people in my class that I'm you know a bio major with or any of these types of emotions I just want you to know that you're not alone. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you on how to overcome imposter syndrome especially when you're a student in STEM and even more so when you get to the doctorate level. So I just want to start by telling you guys a story. I remember when I was doing my postdoc, I think my second year, I was in that postdoc for three years and I think in the second year or so, I had a meeting with my advisor and it was one of those meetings where you go to have like a yearly evaluation and discuss the progress of your postdoc and career plans and so on. So we were having this discussion and he was like, so Gertrude, what are, you know, what are your career plans? And um, you know, and I told him and he was like, why don't you, why don't you, and he gave a suggestion for another career path and it, it had to be with do, being a, an actual scientist. Everything I had mentioned up to that point was, I was still going to use my scientific skills, but it would require that I wasn't a scientist in the lab. And I think maybe it was because I was bent out from the lab. I don't know what was going on, but I remember telling him. I don't think I'm cut out to be a scientist <laughs> and anybody who knows me or who knew me when I was growing up they knew how smart I was they knew that I did well in school they would tell you that I was probably cut out to be a scientist but here I was sitting in front of this man full I had fully gotten my PhD and I was telling him I don't think I'm cut out to be a scientist and he asked me why and I said because I don't think I'm as smart as all these other scientists and I told him that really openly and his his he he told me something that I don't think I was expecting and he was like I'm shocked that you would say that and I was like what I thought you would agree with me and and so he goes on to to tell me that you know, I had applied for this postdoc with thousands of other, well, hundreds, not thousands, but hundreds of other applicants, and he chose me. So he reminded me of that. And he said, and you're doing science in the lab, and it's pretty good work. And he reminded me of all these positives that somehow in that state I wasn't seeing because all I was seeing was all the other people that are smarter than me, all the other people that have published in Nature and Science and all these other journals that I had never published in and forgetting that my own work mattered, that my own work was about to be published in a journal, albeit it wasn't Nature, it wasn't Science, but it was a pretty good journal. And I was forgetting all of that and concluding on myself that I wasn't cut out to be a scientist. Now, if you are in the biological, biomedical sciences, you're at the PhD level and you're going through this, I want you to know that you're not alone. If you're not even in this field, but you're in grad school, okay, I want you to know that you're not alone. It is something that highly accomplished people go through. And you'll be very surprised to learn that your PI, your professors, your the people that you look up to go through this. So I don't want you to feel alone and I don't want you to feel like you don't deserve to be in the academic institution you are just because somehow you are failing to see, just like me, <laughs> failing to see all the great things you have done up to this point. There was even a time I used to think that maybe, like I would sit in meetings, to be honest, this is like the honest, honest truth. I sit in meetings and I would just think that perhaps the school where I got my PhD, Temple University, would come and take my PhD back because they found out I was a fraud. Like that was how much, that was how far I was gone in my thought process. Um, but thankfully with, with talking to my PI at the time, um, and him giving me a lot of encouraging words and being the true leader that he was, I was able to come into my own and be able to think, wait, I can do this. I am smart enough. And if, you know, I put in a little bit more work and if I, you know, like I can still be a good scientist and not worry about what all these other Nobel Prize winning scientists are doing and just 
have respect with my with my work and so how do you overcome imposter syndrome in grad school i'll say that the way you overcome it is to see is to take stock of the work that you have done look at where you've you've gotten to to even apply and get into grad school is not easy. You must have done some amazing work in your undergrad. You must have written some amazing letters. Somebody wrote some amazing recommendation letters about you. So obviously you did something to get to that point. So before you go any further and as you begin to feel those feelings, just think, what is the work that, what has gotten me to this point, right? Something, some great things got you to that point. And you can journal. Journaling has been shown to help people reflect, to take stock, and to help people even heal in traumatic situations. So sit down and journal. What, what are some of the great things you've done in the past? Journal that. The second thing that I've realized that is really helpful is also to talk it out with somebody who will be understanding. Some people are not always gonna be understanding of the fact that you feel like a fraud. This is the truth. But when you begin to say it out loud, you will begin to hear exactly this. Oh my word, I feel the same way. Because when I chat that chat with my, my PI at the time as a postdoc and he, and he encouraged me, I also had a similar conversation with another person she had her um, MD but was doing research in my department. And when I talked with her, she was like, I feel the same way too, Gertrude, even though I've advanced in my career, even though, and at that point, she had even won grant money for which she was doing her work. And she was telling me, but she was a younger, she was closer to my age, so I felt like I could identify with her a little bit more. She's like, look, <laughs> We all feel this and she was a minority as well. So it really did help to talk to people that understood what I was possibly going through and to get feedback from them that said, we feel the same way. But you, the one thing that you do is begin to put one foot in front of the other, which is the next point I want to talk about, is, is that it's important that once you've identified the, the awesome things you've done, okay, once you've talked to people and realized I'm not alone in this, I want you to begin to put one foot in front of the other because... From experience, I know that imposter syndrome can be almost crippling to the point where you may begin to think that because your work doesn't matter, it doesn't make any sense to do any more work, which we know is not going to fly over very well in grad school. Anyway, so uh, don't do that. <laughs> In fact, I was listening to a podcast recently, and in the podcast, the guest was talking about the training that Marines go through in the Marine Academy. And if you don't know who the Marines are, the United States Marines are an a unit of the armed forces within the United States. It's one of the most rigorous units to get into. And so when you're a Marine, okay, then you've paid your dues. And the thing about Marine training is that it's, it's horrible. They call it hell. Okay, hell, I think they have something called a hell week where they go, they really, literally like will crawl through the mud under barbed wires whilst it's raining. Okay, like with, with weights on your back, you know? So so it's, it's, it's intense. And one of the strategies that the most successful candidates are able to use in getting through is learning that they just need to, they don't need to focus on the whole program as a whole, but in that moment, whatever it is they're doing, they just need to complete that. So what do I need if I'm crawling in mud under under rainy conditions with a weight on my back, what did I need to do? I just need to think about moving my next hand forward and moving the next hand forward and moving the next hand forward. Eventually, I'm gonna get to the end of the line. So I really do think that it's important to think, okay, what's my next step? What experiment do I need to do next? What piece of data do I need to generate next? And over time, you realize that the one experiment this week and then the one experiment next week and then the little diagram that you draw this week, all of it adds up so that by the end of your PhD, you have something substantial to publish, to, to share at a conference, whatever the case is, and then be done. And even after you're done, 
to have that mentality of one step at a time it really is a great mentality a book i'm going to recommend to you to read as you go through grad school is a book known as grit and it was written by angela duckworth angela duckworth used to work as a teacher before she went on and got her phd i believe in psychology and she talks a lot about principles that have allowed people to succeed in their endeavors and it hasn't been because they were the smartest or the most talented it was usually because they had grit and usually that grit also was a factor in helping them defeat uh, imposter syndrome so i'm going to recommend that book to you i'm going to leave the link in the comments below in the description and also the comment below check that book out because i think it's going to be super valuable to you so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below have you faced imposter syndrome how did you deal with it let's chat it up in the comments below